here we meet again, this time to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Center for Creative Arts at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Known for our trend-setting roles and cultural leadership, we are proud to mark the 25th anniversary of the Center with an addition of one more festival to our bouquet of four successful festivals. Thank you for joining us as we are launching our newest festival, the Artfluence Human Rights Festival, or by its shortened name, Artfluence. Artfluence is going to shine a spotlight on how the art contributes to the culture of human rights. I am coming to you this afternoon from Guamutle Museum in Durban. This building used to be the headquarters of the Native Administration Department and the center of Durban's harsh systems of labor control. I am Sipindile Shongwa. I'm the senior administrator at the Center for Creative Arts and the curator for the Center's Literature Festivals. I am an artfluencer. From our family of festivals, Time of the Writer, the Durban International Film Festival, Jomba Contemporary Dance Experience, and Poetry Africa, Welcome as we shape the world as artfluencers. Located in the School of Arts in the College of Humanities at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the Center for Creative Arts enjoys the support from the Dean of School, Professor Nobu Shetongwa. She is an artfluencer in her own right. Sangona, my name is Nobu Shetongwa the Dean and the Head of School of Art in the College of Humanities at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Welcome to the inaugural Artfluence Human Rights Art Festival. This festival has a focus on art, constitution and democracy. It is presented by the Center for Creative Arts in partnership with the Embassy of the Netherlands. This festival marks the 25th anniversary of the Center for Creative Arts as an enabler and advocate for social justice and democracy, as well as the 25th anniversary of the adoption of the South African Constitution. Please enjoy the vibrant discussions from our artists throughout the African continent and beyond that seek to advance the South African democracy. I want to thank the leadership of Dr. Ismail Mohamed and his team for this new initiative that is taking place at a critical time in our calendar as it is the Africa month. Thank you very much. An interesting sculpture at Guamutle Museum is an artwork titled The Shadow of the Past by a Durban-born artist, Lidell Moore. The three figures represent migrant workers. Their nakedness refers to the lack of protection and the sitting posture is one of waiting. The figure on the left hand side represent a migrant worker reflecting on his experience, while the middle and the right hand figure represent two migrant workers in conversation. Viewing the sculpture as the head affluencer at the Center for Creative Arts, Ismail Mohamed, a multi-award winning cultural leader who was the artistic director at the National Arts Festival in Makanda, Grahamstown. With over 35 years of experience in cultural leadership and festival design, it was inevitable that I was going to introduce several more festivals to our center's bouquet of festivals. But why a human rights festival? South African artists are well known for using their voices for social justice. Our new constitution adopted on the 8th of May 1996 has enshrined freedom of expression and freedom of creativity in section 16 of our constitutions. While we celebrate these freedoms, we also need to engage critically with just how far we have transformed our society. The introduction of the Art Fluence Festival in the program of the Center for Creative Arts is just one more exciting way through which we allow our artists to critically engage with our society and with where we plan to be as we move forward into our new democracy. You strike a woman, you strike a rock. The slogan signifies the power of women's movement. 
The Center for Creative Arts is proud to bring on board a dynamic art fluencer to lead the inaugural festival. Cultural and gender activist Yushra Badin is the inaugural co-curator and coordinator of the Art Fluence Human Rights Festival. Yushra has previously produced the Culture in Another South Africa 35th Anniversary Reflections Festival. She also coordinated the first international atelier for festival managers that was presented for the first time on the African continent. Yushra also worked on the first Acetage International Cradle of Creativity Festival that was presented for the first time on the African continent. As a pioneering cultural activist with so many firsts to her credits and being included as one of South Africa's 100 young people to watch, Yushra Badin adds the inaugural Art Fluence Human Rights Festival to her pioneering credits. It has been an incredible honor to curate this inaugural festival, especially to co-curate alongside the likes of Dr. Ishmael Muhammad. So thank you for this opportunity, Ishmael, and thank you to the Center for Creative Arts. Thank you to the artists who joined us on this journey, but more so thank you for the work that you are making that is impacting people's lives, for speaking for those who can't, for speaking to those who don't believe in the importance of human rights. Thank you for the work that you do and how it shifts people's perceptions of human rights and how important they are. To do it through the beauty of art is the way to speak to the soul of the audiences. Thank you for the work that you do. Please keep making the work. Please keep fighting for the rights and dignity of all in society. I'm looking so forward to this next few days and hearing the conversations. I hope that everybody watching will also engage through the comments and the chats and we hope to shift society together. Thank you. The arts in South Africa has always been a dynamic platform for social change and transformation. From using our bodies and our voices to fight against apartheid, challenge censorship, or mobilizing our collective energies to realize a new democracy. The artists are the threads and fabric that holds our society together. We, the people, through whose bodies the spirits of our ancestors flow. We are inspired by their struggle. We draw courage from their fearless resistance. We stand tall to offer hope to future generations. We, the people, the poets, the writers, the singers, the crafters, and all of us who gather under the single banner of artists, we are the word bearers of truth. We are the influencers. We are the voices of hope, courage, and resilience. The national lockdowns brought about by COVID-19 pandemic has affected all aspects of our society. The art sector has been hurt more than most other sectors. Artists have not been able to earn a living for more than 12 months. During this particular period, we've seen how much of our society still has many, many cracks. Artists who have been the voices of resilience, courage and hope continue to do their work to defend our democracy. Public invitation. I boldly issue my public invitation to all and any artists of this generation to creatively offer hope and inspiration in our world struggling against gross human rights violations. I boldly issue my public invitation against the backdrop of rapes and sin scars intermingling with the pain and shame of gender-based violence by men from bars, sprinkled with teenage pregnancies, child marriages, and pedophilia, spiced up with shrill cries of widows whose lands were grabbed by family militia, flavored with the insults to barren, infertile, sterile women publicly chased away from households marinated with the indignity of menstrual blood leaking onto one school uniform when that very one person lacks money to buy sanitary pads or menstrual clothes 
seasoned with kidnaps of women whose safe return is premised upon exorbitant ransoms. Salted with femicide against girls and women of all ages simply because they are humans with bosoms. Embroidered with solid glass ceilings that hinder strong women from advancing at the workplace. Peppered with the patriarchal denial of daughters to inherit property from their fathers and husbands. Wrapped up in agonizingly low levels of women effectively participating in leadership and decision making at all levels of society. Pickled with LGBTI refugees denied asylum by the bigotry of migration. Migration officers in homophobic immigration institutions and splashed with religion. Religion misinformed new laws, penalized same-sex love with anal testing, life imprisonment, and capital punishment by hanging, beheading, firing squad, or lethal injection. Against this background, I boldly issue my public invitation to all and any artists of this generation to creatively offer hope and inspiration in our world struggling against gross human rights violations. Let's build an army of artists fighting oppression with art, not bullets. Exposing injustices of fascists, creating hope, giving inspiration and resilience. Poets, Compose poems of liberation. Spoken word creators speak out against oppression. Novelists write about redemption. Writers focus on short stories of the revolution. Biographers record fights against human rights violations. Authors of fiction, and maybe nonfiction, inspire emancipation. Playwrights produce drama against suffocation. Theaters focus on human rights education. Filmmakers, filmmakers, filmmakers expose the violent repression. Rappers and hip hop artists center the Universal Declaration. Musicians join the human rights celebration. Fine artists capture the jubilation. Cartoonists, painters, sculptors, photographers, visual artists, all artists everywhere. I reiterate my public invitation. And so I boldly issue my public invitation to all and any artists of this generation to creatively offer hope and inspiration in our world struggling against human rights violations. I boldly issue my public invitation, my public invitation, my public invitation. The embassy of the Netherlands is an art fluencer too. The embassy has a long legacy of supporting and promoting South African artists and cultural exchanges between the two nations. The solidarity between South African and Dutch artists is deep and passionate. It is marked by this photograph, where hundreds of Dutch artists joined a protest to condemn the South African government for executing Solomon Kalushi Matlang. Dear friends, to the Netherlands, our relationship with South Africa is of great importance. We value the cultural cooperation with South Africa and the regional impact it has on the continent. In 1987, 35 years ago, Amsterdam hosted 300 artists from South Africa in an event that would echo in time, culture in another South Africa. That conference focused on the cultural landscape in South Africa post-apartheid. But, in fact, it was more than that. It was focusing on the basic human rights of an artist and the rights for all. In fact, culture and human rights are inseparable. 
they interact on different levels, they might support each other, they might even coincide. As the Netherlands, we're honored to partner again with South Africa to strengthen human rights in the next conference. And greetings from the Netherlands. Have a good conference. Hello, everybody. On this special day in the country where I live, the 5th of May is our day of freedom. I'm very happy that we collaborate in Artfluence. A festival in which we use the power of art to reflect on the importance of human rights. Because it's through this international language of arts and creative arts that we can exchange ideas, that we can stimulate the debate about norms and values, that we can interpret and understand the world and ourselves. Together with a free press, artists provide oxygen to our societies, indispensable for the functioning of a democracy. The celebration of arts, culture and human rights in this Artfluent Festival is therefore of great importance and I wish you meaningful and inspiring days. the deep solidarity between South Africa and the Netherlands, it comes as no surprise that the Affluent Human Rights Festival is generously sponsored by the Embassy of the Netherlands. Let's hear from the Affluencers at the Embassy of the Netherlands why they see value in partnering with the Affluent Human Rights Festival. On the 5th of May, the start of the Affluent Festival, the Netherlands commemorates Liberation Day. And on the 8th of May, the last day of the festival, South Africa celebrates the 25th anniversary of the adoption of the South African Constitution. Both these days celebrate hope, courage and resilience. And utterance is yet again an example of the strong cultural ties between South Africa and the Netherlands. Celebrating human rights through culture. This was done 35 years ago at the 1987 Culture in Another South Africa conference, which was held in Amsterdam. And once again, we are celebrating the strong ties between the Netherlands and South Africa, not only in the field of culture, but also in many other fields. My hopes for this festival is that all artists from the Netherlands South Africa and the African continent will have an opportunity to work together and to create more brilliant work because culture is what we need more than ever. Hello to each and every artfluencer across the globe who attends the opening session of this fabulous event. I would like to start by thanking Ismail and Yusra and all the colleagues involved at the Center for Creative Arts at the University of KwaZulu Natal for having designed this beautiful online inaugural event called Voices of Hope, Courage and Resilience, especially in this auspicious year. I've seen a great number of encouraging and heartfelt messages in support of this festival, both from the Netherlands, South Africa and other African countries, and that shows the appreciation, but also the need for connecting through arts rather than politics only. For the Dutch Embassy, our relations with strategic partners in the arts and cultural field are very important. 
and especially even more in the era of, of the COVID pandemic. The pandemic has caused global misery, but it does also provide us with an opportunity to reset the rules of engagement in our global society. Arts and culture is critical for that, to show politicians what is it that goes on in a global society. Arts and culture is the oil in the machine which should lead us to the global inclusive and just society. And politics alone can never achieve this. All in society need to be included and get a platform. I believe and hope, therefore, that Artfluence takes a prominent place in the annual events and create an international network and be a connector. monetize global society. This is the last time I will participate in the opening of a cultural human rights event in South Africa, as I will be leaving the country mid-June. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with inspiring and committed professional in the arts and culture scene of South Africa and also the Netherlands, as they provide a critical but undervalued contribution to our global development. The African continent is key in the future global development, and South Africa is a key player on this continent. Ready to continue your collaboration and supporting this field. I wish you all an inspiring few days. Thank you and all the best. Hello to all the art influencers joining us today. We are so excited to partner with the University of KwaZulu Natal's Center for Creative Arts in the inaugural Art Fluence Human Rights Festival. Of course, wishing the center a happy 25th birthday. A birthday to celebrate the continuous efforts of enabling and stimulating the creative sector and through arts addressing the hard issues that we face not only in South Africa, but in Africa and the rest of the world. How can you say no to working with the center that houses the Time of the Writer Festival, Jomba Contemporary Dance Experience, Poetry Africa, and the Durban International Film Festival? Well, in short, you don't. It takes a special team to address a topic like human rights in a four-day online arts festival, structuring the program and managing artists from all over the globe. So if you find them, do not let them go. With that said, art is a form of expressing what sometimes cannot be put into words. This includes important social messages about human rights issues, which are much more powerful when they touch the hearts and minds of people. There's an opportunity created through arts and culture to transform societies, communities and people on important topics such as gender-based violence, femicide, discrimination against LGBTQI people's rights and degradation of the environment which impacts on climate change. It serves as a unifier of people during times of crisis and is able to act as a healing medium for pain and traumatized individuals and communities. During COVID-19, we witnessed people breaking out in song and dance under extremely difficult circumstances as a way of coping with the loss of lives across the globe. The value that arts and culture brings to society is immeasurable and the role that it plays in promoting human rights, dignity and artistic freedom should be acknowledged and encouraged. To Ishmael, Yusra and the team, we thank you for constantly pushing and addressing the hard topics. To everybody watching today, please enjoy the next four days and we thank you for supporting the arts and human rights with us. Thank you. So here's my truth. I know exactly how I feel about this. I feel the system really has no justice. Some of our freedom fighters chose to take the test. One of the very first things we did on the Constitutional Court uh, when we were about to be inaugurated formally was to get our own logo. We couldn't bear the idea of the apartheid stamp being on our documents. And here you can see Nelson Mandela inaugurating the design, not the blindfolded lady with the scales of justice, a South African feeling, expressing the connection between human rights and art and culture. And the designer happened to be Carolyn Parton, whose great-grandmother had taken part in the resistance against the Nazis. What a marvelous combination of events, May the 8th, the day of freedom in the Netherlands, May the 8th, the date of the inauguration of this project. 
I support the Human Rights Arts Festival because it is important for us to be able to talk about our own humanity. Humanity lies in all of us. The last century has seen more advancement in technology than in humanity. In these times of COVID-19, we need each other more. Artists need each other and they need to be going out and speaking on behalf of humanity. Support the Human Rights Arts Festival. I support a human rights festival because now more than ever, artist voices need to be heard. The right to freedom of speech and freedom of expression are entrenched in our constitution and also in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But these are under attack and we need to ensure that we are able to bequeath them to the next generation of children and young people. These are rights that they should have access to right now. And as we've seen under the pandemic, the inequities in our society have been exposed so brutally. There are so many people who are vulnerable and precarious right now, and whose voices need to be heard more than ever. Artists can amplify those voices. Artists can give expression to the realities that we are facing in our world. Artists can make us rethink and reshape our future. So I look forward to this Human Rights Festival. I look forward to the conversations that it will uh, engender. And I look forward most especially to the action that will be coming out of those conversations. So this is a great initiative. Thank you. I support the Human Rights Arts Festival for a number of reasons. The first being that it affirms Article 27 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that states everyone should have the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community and to enjoy the arts. So participation in the arts is a fundamental human right and by having a festival like this, it basically affirms that fundamental human right. But secondly, through theater and literature and film and so on, we are able to interrogate the state of the arts, not only the state of the arts, but the state of human rights in our country. And insofar as we are doing that, we are also contributing to democracy so that also by using the arts to do that, we are affirming freedom of expression, which is a constitutional principle. And again, in so doing, we are defending and advancing the project of democracy. Hi, my name is Virta Spobolia. I'm an independent filmmaker, producer, theater director. I absolutely endorse the new festival, the Human Rights Festival. I believe that it will shed a light on the activity and activism of wonderful people who are doing amazing work, sometimes without any acknowledgement. Kudos to the organizers and good luck. I support the Human Rights Art Festival because filmmakers and art festivals worldwide contribute to the culture of human rights and inform the public about the struggles against abuses and violations of human dignity. I support a human rights arts festival because throughout time and across the world, the arts has given a voice to injustice and been a powerful vehicle for social change, specifically in our own country. Because the arts has the power to hold a mirror to society, uh, it can provoke thought, it can stimulate conversation, it can challenge norms, encourage independent thinking. And the arts can also bring comfort and hope and healing and confront complex social issues all through peaceful, creative processes. But mainly the arts can be highly emotive and when we connect on an emotional level, it just makes us more human because it awakens our empathy and reminds us of the universal connection we all share and the duty we have to humanity to uphold human rights. I believe in a human rights arts festival because the status of arts and culture in society has evolved dramatically since the adoption of Article 27 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which affirmed for the first time the right of every human being to participate freely in the cultural life of their community and to enjoy the arts. Directed towards bridging attitudinal disparities based on prejudices such as race, religion, gender, age, nationality, culture, identity. The human rights agenda is perfectly aligned with the potential of the arts to bring counter discourse, 
to contest privileged narratives and not only raise key questions about our future, but also to facilitate the kinds of conversations that will enable us to collectively imagine the kinds of solutions that will benefit every global citizen. In the darkest years of apartheid, we relied on our truth-tellers to be our moral conscience. The journalists, the storytellers, religious leaders, the activists, and, of course, our artists. Those who helped hold up a mirror to the best and the worst of us to weave the fabric of our new democracy. The hardest lesson that we've learned in the last three decades is that democracy is not about just having a progressive constitution or bill of rights. It's about having leaders who live and breathe those documents who use their position and their power to make them more than just dusty lists of good intentions. And the biggest lesson is that today, more than ever possibly, the work of the truth-tellers is not yet done. In fact, it's only just beginning. So a Human Rights Arts Festival is an idea whose time has come, a reminder that the arts can't just tell stories, but can also create them. They can articulate and contribute to a happy ending. So let the weaving of our tapestry continue. I support the Human Rights Arts Festival because it is really a human right to be given a platform for one to express themselves using creative art, art mediums. It's, uh, uh, it's one commodity uh, countries who have the freedom to really take advantage of. But I will continue to support Human Rights Arts Festivals it's, as a reminder to young artists as well, to know that we are really conduits of change. And I have this strong belief that South Africa's freedom was propelled by some of the greatest minds within the arts fraternity. And it is through spaces such as festivals like this that makes that possible. Kenda Mwafurika Wagamukati, co-founder and director at Hear My Voice, and I support a human rights arts festival. The Center for Creative Arts is proud once again to partner with IMBI's Agenda for African Writing to give a critical reflection of the Affluent Human Rights Festival. My name is Sikyo Mahana. I support a human rights arts festival because artists' rights are human rights. Artists may not be in power, but they possess the power to influence and shape thinking in the broader society. They are the voices of hope amidst despair and despondence. The Affluence Human Rights Festival is a welcome addition to the arts fraternity. Let us join hands and amplify the voices of artists. Prolific South African writer, activist, entertainer, and philanthropist, Peter Dake Ace, was born in Cape Town in 1945. He has worked in the theater since the mid 1960s closely associated with both the Space Theatre in Cape Town and Johannesburg's Market Theatre during the 1970s and 80s. He has written and performed more than 20 plays and over 30 reviews and one-man shows throughout South Africa and abroad. His plays have been presented in the United Kingdom, Denmark, Germany, Holland, Switzerland, Australia, the USA and Canada. His performance of Foreign Aids at La Mama received the OB Award in New York in 2004. Having survived by using his body and voice to challenge the atrocities of apartheid, Peter Dekes has been equally fearless about exposing the bigotry and corruption of South Africa's post-apartheid government. Peter Dekes has been and he continued to be a remarkable voice of hope, courage, and resilience. The Center for Creative Arts is proud to present the Artfluencer, Peter Dake Ace, as the keynote speaker for the inaugural Artfluence Human Rights Festival. The only human right that I have is the right to be human. The rest is earned. <laughs> you see what happens when you have 400 days of lockdown. You sit and think about things you never have a chance to think about because the rat race takes up all your time. And so for 400 days, you can sit and worry about climate change. You can worry about the fragility of our constitutional democracy. 
You can worry about this invisible enemy, and at the age of 75, you really worry, and you're frightened. You think about the things we are now taking for granted, things like freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of association. Once upon a time, association was also not allowed with anyone in those days. I don't know if you remember. Love your neighbor, but don't get caught. 55 years ago, there was a party in Johannesburg. It sounded like a hell of a party. There were some gay men there. In fact, they were all gay. And some of them were wearing drag. It was hell because the police came. It was in 1966. It was against the law. They were arrested. They were taken to prison. Their lives were over. That's what happened in those days. Apartheid was not a pigment of the imagination. And so maybe during the last 400 days, we had a chance to just remember where we came from so that we can celebrate where we are going in the future of the so-called new normal. Picture this. 1966. I'm 21 years old with hair. With hair. <laughs> I'm at the drama school and a friend of mine is having a party. This is a few weeks after the party in Johannesburg. My friend, like me, is, is gay, meaning a criminal. And the party is also full of people who weren't actually supposed to be there because they weren't white like we were. So that was another crime. But what the hell, this was 1966 in Cape Town on a Friday night. And so we were in Woodstock, which is a sort of a gray area, having this lacquer party. And the music was loud and we were, and we were dancing. We white oaks enjoyed showing our friends from the Cape Flats that we also had a sense of rhythm. And I spoke to quite a few people, in, especially one very nice young chap called Alan. And uh, we talked about a film. Well, he said he wanted to also be an actor one day. And I said, oh, OK. And the film was quite something, and of course we hadn't seen it at the same time because we weren't allowed to, because he was coloured and I was not. But it was quite noisy and I, I needed cigarettes, I didn't have any, so I said to him, listen, um, come with me, I've got the car outside, I want to go down the road and just get some cigarettes and, and, and maybe we can just talk. He said, oh, you just talk. He said, uh, you want to go up to Signal Hill maybe and watch the sunrise? I said, oh, that sounds nice. He said, ah, that is nice, man, you know. Me caught in the car with you on a Friday, midnight, maybe two o'clock in the morning, on Signal Hill. What do you think? This is bloody Hollywood. Are you mad? And Alan came to me and uh, said, uh, can you give me a lift? And I said, y yes, of course, with pleasure. And so we get in the car and uh, drive towards the Cape Flats, which makes me a little bit nervous because I don't know the Cape Flats very well, Manenberg, Mitchell's Plain. I don't want to get lost on the way back. But then he says, turn right here, and I turn off the freeway, and I'm in familiar territory. Ah, Rondebosch, and then Claremont, and then Kenilworth, and there's no southeaster wind, and I think it's a full moon. And the big trees lining the avenues, big houses behind the hedges. Alan sort of pulls himself down into his car seat. I don't know why he's trying to do that. I mean, what, does he want to be invisible in the car? Eventually he says, okay, and I stop. Uh, and he gets out and he closes his door very carefully, quietly. I get out of my side and bang the door and he says, Dooch! okay, now we cross the road and there's, of course, is the gate and there's the big house in darkness. And he opens the gate and goes in. I follow him, he said, hey, no, hide in the hedge. I said, what? He said, hide in the hedge. So I hide in the hedge. And I watch him cross the lawn, and he goes to a little shed, a little garden shed. I suppose where the, they keep the garden equipment. Um, he opens the door, goes in. I wait. And then in the window, I see him with a lit candle waving at me to come. OK. Alan is the garden boy. Okay. And so I now slip across the lawn, hoping there's no garden furniture lurking or a dog. Oh, God. I get to the door, open the door, close the door. 
he's got a little chair which he puts under the, the doorknob so that we are really secure. Oh my goodness, the little garden shed smells of it's a disinfectant, paint. The wooden walls are sort of bright green, I think. Oh, there's a lawnmower and a curled up hose pipe. Oh, and there's a mattress. His room? Mattress on a door, the doors on bricks. And there's one window which is covered by plastic, black plastic, a sort of a curtain. And um, look, I know Alan by now. I've, I, he's told me he's 19 years old and yes, he wants to be an actor. And his parents live in, in Mannenberg. Uh, his father collects scrap iron to sell for a living. His mother is a maid in Pinelands. His sister is 13 and pregnant and his older brother was killed. I didn't ask why. Then I know exactly why we're here. Okay, now quickly take off my t-shirt and take off my jeans and chuck them on the floor. And he starts taking off his shirt, his white shirt. He unbuttons it and very carefully takes it off and very gently and with respect folds it up. Folds it up. Why? Maybe that shirt was a giveaway to him from the family, from the son in the family, the white son who is somewhere in a military camp doing his military training with a gun in his hand. Anyway, he has now got his clothes off and he sees my clothes on the floor and he picks it up and he looks quite angry and he folds the t-shirt and the jeans and I laugh and he laughs because he's, he looks a bit like the houseboy folding up the white master's clothes. Without the uniforms of our class, we, uh, we look the same. In the candlelight, we don't even have a color. And so we do what we have to do. And the next morning I open my eyes. Well, I open my eyes because the sun is shining in my eyes. The sunbeam has found its way through the plastic black covering of the window and is shining in my eyes. And I look up and I see the ceiling and I think, oh no, God, what the horror, where, where am I? And I look and next to me, of course, is my friend, Alan, sleeping. And he opens his eyes and he sees me and he smiles and suddenly he says, Oh no, God, you still, oh, you're still here, you've got to go. No, you've got to go. I said, it's okay. He said, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's Saturday. You must go. I said, wait, no, it, listen, he said, listen, listen, please, quickly, quickly. You've got to get dressed, man. Listen, it's today. I've got to, I've got to wash, wash, wash the cars. I've got to wash the cars. And the other garden boy is coming. We've got to do it. You can't be found here. Please go, please go. And I said, yes, okay, okay. And I put on my T-shirt, my jeans quickly. And he hands me my, my shoes. And I think one of the socks is gone, but we haven't got time for that. And he said, no, 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 listen, go, go outside. And, and then you go around the back, behind the garage. There's, a, there's an opening in the fence. Hey? And I'll go through into the neighbor's property. But be careful. They've got guns and dogs. I said, but it's okay. It's all right. He said, it's not okay. I said, no, but it's Saturday. I don't, I don't have lectures. God, I felt so stupid saying that. He said, please, hurry. Please, Master Peter. Go. I never saw him again. That's the way we were in 1966, 1976, 1986, till 1994. And even now, 27 years into our democracy, which only came here during the presidency of Bill Clinton. Even now we are searching for a vaccine against the virus of racism. It's not happening because there are so many variants that just pop up every single day. And yet, through all those years of our separate developments, with apartheid, politically correct, we just believed that love is love and everyone kisses the same with care. So let us remember where we come from. And really, truly, if I share stories with you of the fun, of the friendships and the inspirations that I had with my illegal friends in the dark. I can really tell you about fear.
From the championing spirit of veterans like Peter Dake Ace, a new generation of South Africans continue to rise to be today's voices of hope, courage, and resilience. Oprah Singa Sibongile Mgoma is one such champion. Adfluenza Sibongile Mgoma has lent her beautiful soprano voice to major opera houses in the country and she has also performed with the best orchestras and has shared her talent on most impressive stages in the world. Set to join the University of Free State and to stir up Bloemfontein's music scene as the university's new conductor for the UFS Choir, the sensational opera singer's voice has grown so much louder over the past two years, calling for artists to be treated with respect and integrity. In 2019, she launched the I Am For The Arts Facebook page and has grown it to become a dynamic social movement to challenge states, maladministration and corruption in the arts. In 2020, as a national lockdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, took its grip over South Africa and almost decimated the entire arts industry, affected livelihood and imploded the rights of artists to create and express themselves freely. Sibongile Mgoma's voice has championed for artists to be supported strategically and with dignity. In 2021, Frustrated by the lack of transparency of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture's administration of an artist relief fund and the total maladministration of the Presidential Economic Stimulus Plan by the National Arts Council, Sibongile Mgoma led a 60-day process sit-in at the offices of the National Arts Council. Joined by a handful of artists, her determination and courage led to several more artists joining in the sit-in. Soon the protests gained momentum with protest sit-ins being spurred in the Free State and the Northern Cape, and the evolution of a people's festival, which evolved organically with thousands of artists across the country calling for state accountability. After 38 days into the sit-in, the National Arts Council filed an interdict and laid charges at the Johannesburg police stations and scenes reminiscent of the apartheid era's treatment of artists who were voices of courage, hope, and resilience. Svongilero was not going to budge. The national lockdowns brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic has affected all aspects of our society. The art sector has been hurt in months. Artists could not earn a living during the national lockdown. A PSP grant that was supposed to support artists was maladministered. It took the voice of courage, hope and resilience of Sibongeli Ngoma to stand up for the rights of artists. We at the Centre for the Creative Arts are delighted to announce her as the inaugural winner of the Artfluence Human Rights Award for the Arts. Hello. And uh, thank you so much to the Adfluence Festival for nominating me for this award. Uh, I didn't know that I was a human rights activist. I just thought I was an artivist. And I am humbled because it was unexpected. But thank you so much. Uh, but I don't want to take this as my award. I want to say that if it was not for Abashali Basse NAC, the people who have stood with me, stood by me, fought with me shoulder to shoulder all the way through, the people who have slept on the floors of the NAC, the people who have refused to be bullied, the people who have refused to be threatened into silence, the people who have said we want to be counted, we want to be those ones who are at the forefront of the struggle, I wouldn't be here accepting a, a human rights award from the Affluence Festival 
wow so this one is not for me but it's for other shali so i'm not accepting this one for spongy Goma. i'm accepting this one for other shali versus nac and i am going to say for everyone to know that this award belongs to other shali versus nac because they stood up and they chose to be counted when it was important to be counted and i would want to uh, speak a little bit about why it's important for us to fight this way for the arts and the vital role that is played by the arts in a democratic society. Um, if we understand, if we all understand very well as arts practitioners and creators, we all know that even with other subjects that we studied, even as children growing up, uh, art gave us a better voice to express I remember growing up studying myths through music. I remember growing up studying science through dance. I remember my mom used to teach me every subject in primary school through dance or music. So I would wonder why we have lost the essence of what art can do in spaces where people cannot reach. And I remember dealing with very young children as a trainee, a uh, drama teacher, uh, dealing with issues of uh, broken homes, divorce, drugs, you know, and some really uh, sensitive issues using drama. So yeah, arts are very important and vital to democracy because they give us alternatives. Look at the the activations we have done while we have been at the NAC, peaceful protest through art. Our art has spoken louder than any protest where people burn tires, where people burn libraries, where people are killed by police and the army. And yet we have managed to bring so much joy to so many households because of the art that we have created here at the NAC. So yes, Arts are very important in a democracy. We give a, an alternative to what does not work. If protesting in the in the usual is not working, then there's a there's a better way of protesting through art. And if people don't understand what you're saying when you're having a conversation, you can sing a song that resonates because it touches a deeper nerve than just an, a, a normal conversation. So. That is why we would for artists to be taken care of, for artists to be recognized, for the arts to be brought back to a better position in society. Because when you talk about social cohesion, what are you talking about without arts and culture? So yes, that is why it is important and vital for us to have the arts in a democracy. And once again, thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of Abashali Basse NAC. And yes, as Wangilam Gong, I'm very honored. It takes courage to stand up with integrity against injustice. Often, it comes with loss. In testifying at the Zondo Commission, South African poet Arthur Williams said he's unemployed and has become unemployable. This is after he blew a horn on the South African Revenue Services. The Affluence Human Rights Festival salute poet Arthur Williams for his courage to stand against state capture and blow a whistle on corruption. Arthur Williams is a voice of hope, courage and resilience. These words all I have is these words that pour from the scruffy bag in my chest, like the scruffy bag that pours the skinny bones of an infant corpse starved of hope. Words trickle down the wrinkled cheeks of a defeated mother who knows too much sun and too much sin and too much sorrow. She knows the rhythm of my words, these words this mother who cries the cry of the desert, that cry long after the tears, long after the stench, 
long after the stones are piled in random heaps to remember the organized culling of her meaning. Word after word, bullet after bullet, lie after promise, her tree goes silent, her mountain mute. All I have is these words, no bite of bread or drop of drink or bum to blast or gun to shoot to take his eye or her eye or my eye, but I, I have these words, these pockets of power upon my lips, lips of limit, but spirit 10,000 suns bright, words that reach high into the sky to catch bullets in flight, words that dig deep into the darkness of hatred to bring light, words that soak into the soul in pain to bring warmness at night, Words that make those who do wrong turn to do what is right. Words that make those with selfish blindness awaken at sight. Words that awakens the songs of dignity and silences power and might. Words that brings sand from water in delight. Words that makes old enemies turn and unite. Words that dissolves the lies of us and them, black and white. All I have is these words, but these words walk on water. These words dance across waterfalls and push back the clouds to bring the sun back into view and pushes down the sea levels and raises the crop from its slumber in rich soil and raises the fallen school and fallen bridge and fallen people with their fallen hope. All I have is these words that leap from these lips, that pulse with every living beat, that beat heartbeat that makes us one. When that mother cries, we all cry, for being one is all our spirits know. All I have is these words that are now offered to you, because all we have is each other. In my poem, These Words, I talk about the power of words, uh, that words can reach into the sky to catch bullets in flight and that words can make old enemies turn and unite. And I really believe in the power of words. Uh, I think what writers in South Africa need to do is, is far more uh, step into the power of our words, really believe in their power, and so stand up more boldly, uh, more bravely, to both to resist the evils in our society, like state capture, like corruption, um, like the erosion of our human rights, and to inspire the rest of us to stand up and, and do the same. Uh, I testified before the Zonda Commission uh, for two whole days in March uh, based on the evidence I had and the experience I had of state capture. And I counted it an honor to serve our country in that way, to use my words to, to resist corruption and to inspire our fellow um, um, citizens. And so I think we as writers have that responsibility. I think we have the duty to use our words uh, to uh, resist the erosion of our democracy and human rights. And I think we have the privilege of being able to use our words, use our talent, use that which we are passionate about to inspire um, other South Africans to, to stand up, to resist the forces in our country uh, and to fully embrace um, this political freedom we have until we all have social and economic freedom. The arts offer us moments of critical reflections. The arts grounds us to our current reality. The arts challenges us to act with conviction. The arts inspires us. The arts gives us a scope to envisage a future where equality, justice, and human rights prevail. We invite you to join us this week as we celebrate the Affluence Human Rights Festival. Through performances and seminar discussion, we intend to provoke, challenge, and inspire. The Affluence Human Rights Festival will embrace protest as much as it embraces celebration about the victory of human dignity over oppression. We are delighted to present affluences who use the power of song to remind us about why we should celebrate and amplify our voices as the voices of hope, courage, and resilience. Good afternoon.
we the composers and performers of the story's original musical song cycle, pledge our support to the inaugural Arts, Constitution and Democracy Festival. First up, we explore the world of Anne Frank. She lives on through her diary entries, which were published posthumously after the Second World War. South Africans have drawn on the symbol of Anne Frank in diverse ways to make sense of our own history and politics. Locally, our young activists like Hector Peterson and Nkosi Johnson live on in our memories, whilst others in the current zeitgeist speak out with courage, hope and resilience against issues like climate change, racial discrimination and intolerance while advocating for a better world. Uh, she'll be singing a piece called uh, Song in the Attic. It comes from History Girls, which is a new musical intertwining the narratives of 11 remarkable young women who all went on to make history in their own special way. In this number, we meet 14-year-old Anne Frank in an attic in Amsterdam on a wintry evening. The year is 1943, and she writes in her diary. December 21st, 1943. Dear Kitty, tonight is the winter solstice. We are now at the furthest point from the sun. The shortest day, the longest night. Somewhere outside the world is turning here in this attic. All time has stood still Cities outside I fear are burning Here in this attic I'm safe but alone I still remember A world filled with laughter With people in parks And parlor games after shared with friends a simple day ends with laughter and joy or a kiss from a boy but those days are gone Compassion and care 
Good day, everyone. We take it for granted that in the current day South Africa, we can speak our minds without fear of censorship and live our lives without sanctioned prejudice against race, creed, or sexual orientation. This year marks the 55th anniversary of when the so-called Gay Men's Party was raided in Forest Town, Johannesburg. The Forest Town raid created an opportunity for the nationalist government to promulgate the 1957 Immorality Act, which further restricted the relationships between different races and passing explicit anti-homosexual legislation. With South Africa's new constitution, things today are completely different when it comes to embracing gender and sexual diversity. For those of you who've come here for redemption, welcome sinners one and all. I am Father Patrick. And I am Pastor Rob. Ah. To our dear friends of Dorothy who are acting out heresy. All the boys in the band who in the dark get out of hand. Be no more conflicted, those thoughts can be restricted. It can be done, we know, and lucky for you, here at the camp we'll show. on his knee or even Moses near a tree they'll help you pray the gay away you've got to pray the gay away it's easy pray the gay away the holy books they do decree it's there for anyone to see you've got to pray the gay away so when you're feeling down and there's no one else around and you don't know where to look Always remember what's written in the good book. It's best to pray the gay away. I did it. Pray the gay away. One day I met a talent scout. I said, no, I'm not coming out. I chose to pray the gay away. We all can pray the gay away. Everybody pray the gay away. When someone looks at you with doubt, just say, I'm dating a girl scout that proves you. Pray the gay away. We know it might seem tough, your hormones make it rough to resist altitude in the city. Well, in times like those, just stop and think of titty. It's good to pray the gay away. It's right to pray the gay away. The dark room is a melting pot. They'll go to hell the whole damn lot. Resist and pray the gay away. And so we pray the gay away. Hail Mary, pray the gay away. You say his abs are piping hot. To us that means just deadly spot because we pray the gay. It's the spot. We don't sing ace tracks from Camelot. For sure, we pray the gay. Away. Santa Maria, amen. Well, hello again. Still at home. <laughs> Yeah, King and I working from home, ne? Yes, says. Lockdown has really been getting on all of our nerves. But we also all have a dream that's standing by to break forth from beyond the wing. South Africans are a courageous people. I mean, just look at how far we've come in the short time of our democracy so far. No one's saying it's perfect. 
but we're a resilient people who are more than ready to take the world by storm. So for this final song, we've got, uh, the song is called uh, Taking the World by Storm, and we've got two very contrasting characters, both with their own dreams and aspirations. Uh, the one is an avid soccer player, loves the outdoors, and the other one is agoraphobic, which, if you don't know, is somebody that's afraid to go outside. So please help me in welcoming for one final time to, today, uh, Leah Marie and Amanda Kunene. <laughs> Describe it, it's a feeling that takes over your brain. I try to hide it, but I want to play the game every second of every day. You chase the ball, you're right behind, you catch up, you shoot, and then you find you've got one goal in mind. And for a moment, everything you worry about flies away. Cause you're just so excited you get to play the game One day I'm gonna make something great of me Show them that I can be anything that I want to be and more And then I'm gonna make the world a better place When I leave I'll never be replaced So beware of the weather cause I'm taking the world by storm takes over my brain It's getting warmer and I promised to myself I would go out and meet the sun Take a step outside the door I won't chicken up not like before But my heart starts to roar And in that moment The outside is a little too much to bear just stay calm and leave the house I want to seize the day But not today One day I'm gonna make something great of me Show them that I can be anything that I want to be and more And then I'm gonna make the world a better place When I leave I'll never be replaced So beware of the weather cause I'm taking the world by storm be quite what I expected. Let's say that a hurricane awaits. I'm gonna push through and open up the gates. One day I'm gonna make something great of me. Show them that I can be anything that I want to be and more. And then I'm gonna make the world a better place. When I leave, I'll never be so beware of the weather, cause I'm taking the world by storm. So beware of the weather, cause I'm taking the world by storm. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us to launch the Affluence Human Rights Festival. I am Sipindile Longwa. I'm an arts fluencer. And I wish you an inspiring and empowering art influence as I continue to explore the Guamuhle Museum. Bridging the gap. Learning to listen. Bridging the gap. Learning to listen and to be brave. Ears have no self-defense mechanism. What will awaken from hearing another voice? It can leave you raw, vulnerable, and confused. Raw, vulnerable, confused. Bridging the gap, learning to listen, and to be brave enough to accept the change that always comes. Hi, my name is Sean Flickweer. I am a poet from the Netherlands, an interdisciplinary artist, live in Amsterdam. Thank you, uh, Art Fluence, for inviting me 
Um, we are talking about the voices of hope, resilience, uh, and especially related to gender-based violence. <clears throat> and uh, therefore, I chose a poem that I would like to share. It's in Dutch. Uh, you can click the subtitles if you'd like the English uh, uh, translations. Um, actually, it's my hope for all the people that go in bravely, that go bravely into the outside world, knowing that all day, every day, they are asked to explain themselves and to defend their right to be somewhere, and they bravely do it every day. And this is a poem where I talk about what I hope for them: this safe space this quiet inner world space where they just forget. Ik hoop dat jij, ik, zit te flirten met het water. De lucht met jou mijn geluid bezwangend, geluid baard. Voor niemand in het bijzonder, voor de meerkoet, voor de overkant. Ik hoop dat jij, ik, jou, mijn hersenpan en plooien aan het gladstrijken bent. In een poging te omvouwen. Alles proberen te verpakken waar wij alles onderdeel van zijn. Met een rekenmachine, sommen maakt. Getallen, uitkomsten die wij nooit zullen bevatten. En dat jij, ik, ervan niet lachen. Dat je zit en jij jezelf uitspreidt. Oren uitslaat, zodat ze opvangen wat winden zeggen over waar te waaien. Maar dat jij beter weet waar. En niets in het bijzonder naar de luwte. Dat jij je kind voelt. Je trans glimlach achter je hand. Voor niemand in het bijzonder. Voor het kikkerdril, voor het alg. Verbergd. Zoals wij allemaal verbergen wat ons mooi maakt. Voor niemand in het bijzonder. Van onszelf. Dat je niet in waakstand, niet in weerstand, dat je met je voeten in het stopcontact en dat de elektriciteitsrekening betaald is. Dat niemand jou vraagt waar je bij hoort. Niet de stoelen, niet, niet de tafel, niet zegt dat jij geen tafel bent, dat de poesje voorbij loopt. Je niet opmerkt, niet zegt dat jij een mens bent. Dat je een condens in je maag neer hoort druppelen. Dat ijsvelden rivieren worden, beekjes, oneindig veel het te bevaren water, hoe meer vertakt, hoe, hoe verder jij, ik, doorvaart, vaar naar niets in het bijzonder. Naar het moment voordat je voor het eerst boos op iemand was. Het moment voordat iemand in het bijzonder iemand. Dat je vergeet dat er niemand is om jou te antwoorden. Ik hoop het voor jou, voor de meerkoet, voor de overkant, voor het kikkerdril en het alg, voor de luwte. Voor jou in het bijzonder. Voor jou mijn schaduw. Voor jou mijn glimlach. Dat je vergeet. Stop! 
Ah! 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 Ah!